What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Luke Tiger Poker 10K Challenge. Uh, let's see. We're back on Bravada again. Um, I think that's the only place I play at, so don't even know why I say it anymore. But um, on Bravada, 100 NL, trying to wrap up this 10K. We're getting closer and closer every time we play. Uh, if you hadn't watched the weekly update, uh, we are now at 8,700, so hopefully in about three weeks, four weeks tops, we should be, this thing should be put to bed, I guess. Um, this table up here is very interesting. Um, we got limpers in the past who've been calling, and we got this guy just been going kind of aggressive so he's only aggressive pre-flop so he's very passive post-flop so i am going to be playing a few more hands that are very marginal against him uh just because and then these guys have been calling so like a nine six suited here i think is very good and uh, this guy is new he's only been here one rotation uh, he hasn't raised yet. He called one time, and this guy called. So we're looking to call nine to win basically, what, a 30-some dollar pot? Um, they don't think our 9-6 is going to win it, and I want you to flop the world for us. Um, so, yeah, we would have had the open ended with a backdoor flush draw. But, um... And that pricing's borderline. Um, with him being there and this guy sandwiched, it's definitely making it a um, better play. One thing we'd have to look at uh, on this board is, okay, let's say let's check, check, and then this guy bets right here. And he bets for like half pot to three quarters pot. Um we have an open in it uh down here we have pocket sixes again this is another table where um very crazy tonight it's just a limp fest and call 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 so we are actually going to be close to the button unless 59 dollars here decides he's going to make it so this guy raised and then on that board he gave up to player three so kind of interesting and again as i said down here um it is just the calling fest all the way around. So we raised it up, hoping in, in, that we were going to get maybe heads up. So we got two people facing here, probably with this flop. Um, unless player five go ahead and bets into us, we'll probably go ahead and make a continuation bet. Uh, just a little bit over half pot. And then 52, of course, if anybody does anything funky or, you know, we can always hit hit a six. And a good thing is we have six of hearts. So we know if the six does come, it will be not completing that flush. And we're going to, because he just flat, we're going to double. And then if he shoves, actually, we'll, unfortunately, I forgot about his stack sizing. We're going to have to hope he's on the flush draw. Doubt it very seriously, ace-queen. So, a mistake on our part there. That fucks when you make that mistake. But oh well, moving on to another table. Um, and we have uh, player six over here who is thinking he's the sheriff of the table uh, I guess and or he's the uh, poker pro um, but again let's kind of review that hand it was call call so when we when we bet the first time um, middle mistake on our part but player three when he calls you know he's on the heart draw or he has a queen of some sort um, maybe a weak queen and because of his if he had like eighty dollars i don't mind that bet we made there as double barreling because if he had the heart draw we're getting him to fold that out so what's his fold equity there and if he has a very weak queen he might even fold that out too but when we bet 24 and he's got 30 some bucks left it's just 
poor. And then, we're, of course, we're going to call off what was left uh, just because it was a mistake on our part. And at that part, we got a $12 bet into a $100 pot pretty much. And it looks like we're going to see some fireworks here. So is he got ace-king against ace-queen, ace-jack? I guess you're not going to fold your last five here, are you? I mean, this is silly. So this guy... Oh, seven. So that was very interesting. Um, but one hand, he gives it right back. Yay haw to that. Um, and 71% guy up here is uh, making some money. And I don't know what player six's deal is. He's like, keeps talking trash to everybody. And, you know, he lost and he's like, oh, sweet, the guy lost. But he's playing just as poor as he is. So it's pretty interesting. Up here, we're going to open with our A6 uh, suited. A little bit of a looser open, but we, this table is call, 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 call. And the callers are one and two. So we'll take that flop many a times there um we're gonna go ahead and bat into this guy he's playing a good percentage of his pots um if an ace comes i think that might have the nut unless he's got queen jack but we can play a hand very cautiously after that we hit a six so we do have a little bit of equity uh, we are going to double barrel here um again if he's on some type of draw and we can maybe get him to fold out and if he shoves, it's pretty self-explanatory what we're doing with our hand now. So, we're pretty much done in the hand. Nothing for us to do from here on out. We only beat the missed draw. So, apparently, we beat the missed draw. <clears throat> Good for us. Yay for us, right? Um, so... Uh, yeah, our ace would have been no good if we had, he had actually ace queen. I guess he just didn't want to give up on that board. So, um, our pair of six is held up. I guess he's calling with his gut shot, maybe, you know, but again, so we're, you know, notes, if you guys take notes, I try to remember, especially on Bravada, because, uh, you know, if I would sit down and be able to keep the notes in the future, definitely would put notes, but if you want to put notes on somebody, you definitely want to say he called off with uh, ace high with, you know, a premium hand he just kept calling with. Down here, um, I, we're going to go ahead and then raise this up and see if we can get the, these guys to fold out. Now, we did um, pick up the pot, but again, we had our sixes earlier. So we might get some action where usually we would not. So the unfortunate thing when we are looking at these type of tables and stuff is usually the action is going to go slow. And because it's limp, 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 the hands are going to be played out a lot longer they're gonna go so it's gonna be a little bit maybe boring session for a lot of you uh good thing is you're gonna um sit back and see how to play a bunch of limpers in the pot so um it looks like what's what we got everywhere and again we we haven't done much up here on this table really hadn't got any hands to do anything with um so this guy's kind of tight he's you know, ace jack top of hand he's going with. So we're going to take a stab right here at the beginning. And if he raises, we'll fold. But, uh, you know, if he doesn't really hit anything, I don't think he's going to continue. He's playing a very kind of tight poker and post flop. He's very passive. So he's either giving up and moving on with the hand. And like I said, we expect to see a lot of periods where it's going to be slow. Um, Hey, we got Jack, so we actually can maybe play this. But again, we're looking, uh, especially if player six, it should be an interesting hand. Uh, how this goes down. And I totally expect to get a call call here, and we're going to make it bigger because of that. And if the ace or something like that comes off, then so be it. And if player six would do some funky here, like shove on us or raise, then we would... Uh, get away from the hand because he's all about trying to be tricky with his plays 
So it would pretty much tell us he's got aces or kings or ace king, and only one set of those hands are we actually going to be pretty okay against. And here, this you know, he's playing a lot of hands. We'll definitely take a lot of flops against him, especially when we have position on him so much. And no reason for us to, I mean, we got three people. We're not going to win this with a pot with this board so wet. Um, we're just going to take the free card and move on about our business. And with uh, this guy actually betting, there's just really not much I don't think we can do. So it'll be pretty much get away from the hand. It's like this table up here is non-existent right now. We haven't really hit anything. So it should be interesting to see how this, you know, he bets $3. So hopefully he's got a very strong hand betting $3 in that pot. Um be interesting to see what play. Well, he folded. So, I mean, not many hands that, again, unless he's on the flush draw right there, that he should call that he's going to fold the river to. And again, anytime they limp, and we'll make just a little bit bigger size opening on these guys. And this board is wet because of the diamond and the other, so we're actually going to go ahead and bet. And... We're going to throw again. If he shoves here, we, we'll call. Um, his 9-10 hits, his straight hits. His two pair hits, unfortunately, is like queen. So we, we mop. Bleh, whatever that one. But we're definitely calling that the last bet on the river. Um, um, really, really interesting there. And I guess maybe when... Um, I, yeah, I just don't understand it. I mean, unless he thinks that we were folding to the straight out there, but then again, we got to look at when we get down to that far in the hand, the pot, when he shoves that, the pot to stack, you know, for us to call, the odds to call versus our win rate, it's definitely an easy call at that time. But, I mean, that's totally when that board comes out. We we expect to probably win this about 30 40% of the time without me running the numbers through poker stove or something. It's probably about a 30% win rate for us at, at that time. Uh, he can easily have two pair, you know. So we're not totally thrilled about when we make that call. Um, and actually getting to see this guy call off pretty light i mean even though this guy was short stack and he's 10 is a little bit lighter hand to be calling with um in that instance where this guy has not really shown much i mean he had king jack and the flop was a jack and the guy called off with an ace 10 on the flop i mean it wasn't much money but again there was no reason didn't really have anything there was no you know he'd had a backdoor straight draw and then he had top you know he can hit an ace and that was pretty much it so just shows that this guy has maybe got a couple of hands where he got lucky and that is where his chips came from and of course we've seen him play a lot of pots and so and he's played out of position on a lot of those too um I think he was even involved in that one hand where we were talking, where we had 9-6. So, again, we wanted to play it, but then this guy over here is a little bit tighter, open-raised it. So, it's like, how many times are we going to be good in that hand? And a new player down here. So, you know, until we can get a little bit of maybe a rotation or two to see how if he's going to be just loose as a goose or if he's you know playing a tighter range you know we got to get a little bit of feel for him before we start making plays at him not that we were going to do anything with our last hand there but just 
kind of saying in general, you know, it's good to see. Now he's played two hands back to back, so it'd be interesting. He's playing out of position, so it'd be interesting to see how he continues for the next two or three hands. Uh, here, eight four diamonds. I don't mind this. We'll complete. See how the flop goes. We have now open-ended straight draw which we have the bottom so we're not going to be too thrilled about it and uh, of course up here we're going to be raising in our when we're out of position just a little bit larger than we would if we had position and this guy here um who made the bet again if maybe this player three made this bet wouldn't mind calling because he'd been the last act and then we wouldn't give him as much credit but this player up here who is not aggressive at all he is making that play so we're definitely getting out of the way so he could easily already have the nut in the hand and we're just drawing dead the whole time I think it's the first time we've actually got to play the button here. And we're going to make one stab at this. Again, the guy's pretty passive post-flop. So there's not much we're going to do. And, you know, we made our chance. We made stab and he's playing. So, again, this guy is not aggressive. Every time he's been aggressive, he's actually had the nut in the hand um, or very close to it. So we're just going to like get out of the way and eventually, you know, I think he's just going to give us his money. So here he's got aggressive, but he's done it for three hands in a row. So we've took our read from before. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and take our hand. You know, if he, if he ends up beating us, he ends up beating us. And if he does it, then that's fine. But the Jax is a hand. I think I'm going to take all in with him. So he had ace king. He actually had a bigger hand, but well, oh well, you know, he hit his king, but we're still flipping at that time. Um, so we're actually going to make this call down here because we just know we're going to hit our set of nines because he was at the table for one, but we knew we were going to get position against him. And I don't think there's any reason to raise here. We're just going to flat call it. And if he has kings, he's got kings. We're going to have to hope he has ace-king. But, again, we're not going to fold here. If he ended up catching at the end, he ended up catching at the end. So, And the king might just scare him off here. Um, there's just nothing for us to do. So we're going to check. Again, if he has kings or jacks, then so be it. I think we get it in either way. So he had ace 10. So we got him to do the bluff on the end. But there was really no reason for us to bet when the king comes off. Um, at that time, it, it just, you know, if he has kings, we're getting in bad. And we're still probably going to get our 70 in one way or another. But again, um, it's just a matter that. You know, and then the jack comes. So if he had like ace jack or ace king, you know, kings or jacks, he'd definitely get in there. But he then might make a play with his ace jack or something like that at the very end. Um, guess we should reload on our table up here. Forgot about that earlier. Maybe we'll get our uh, little buddy back with our ace king type of hand. But, um, but he's just going to be giving money away left and right. Um, just it's about patience is what it comes down to on him. So here we checked and this guy has bet three dollars in this pot. And this is a good pot to where we can raise when we check to him. And by doing so we can make it twelve dollars and maybe take this pot down. Um, you know, if player six does something here, we're just gonna get out of the way. But you know, from the way that pot, and then if he calls, we're actually probably going to bet again on the, the next card. So, and if, you know, if he has a jack, he might call here. But a lot of times we can take this pot down. It's just so scary of a board to him. 
even if he has a jack, he's got to like, we checked and then, then we raised, you know, it up from there. Uh, and we're just going to get away with that hand. I guess we should have played that in, huh? There's a diamond game, so we don't feel it's quite as bad. Um, still don't think they kind of got the flesh draw. Could be wrong. And there is the mix the straight. So very interesting on that. And here with our eights, you know, there's just so many cards that can come. So we're just going to go ahead and bet and see if we can take this down. Um, we're just going to win it so big as percentage of time. It's unlikely. And if they have like ace five and they do get brave, um, I mean, if player one would probably shove that type of hand or something. So here's our player six limping again. So we're definitely going to just isolate over to him and maybe just even pick this up. But it looks like we got loose papers again. Now, this guy's been here for a little bit, so we can pretty much put um, small pocket pairs and things like that, suited connectors in these guys' hands. And I don't think betting here, we're going to win against three players. So we're going to check this and then see what comes off on the next card and if it goes check 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 again then we'll probably will take a small bet at it but we can look that somebody might have been sandbagging their king on that flop I'm trying to think of what the guy bet five dollars so he could be betting his small pocket pair now with this guy over here player six with him calling takes away our play we could have done the same play as we did last time but uh with that it's um one of these guys i bet's got a king i mean this guy could have picked up a flush draw of some sort and that's the reason he called um they're just that fishy to do so so and i think he's gonna play if he i honestly think player six has got the king to be honest with you so um should be wrong so so there's the um <coughs> Like seven, eight, like I was talking about, pocket pairs, pseudo connectors, um, and connector cards. Yeah, right there it was. But he's calling that being under gun. So we can pretty much label him a fish. I mean, that's just a fish move all the way around. So the guy up on this table up here, you gotta be cautious, is left. So we do have the other um guy who's been playing a little weird. Um but the guy we were hoping to maybe get our money back from is gone. And then this guy is sit out and left. So this table is pretty well drying up very quickly. And definitely a jack nine type of hand we're going to open up. And we're probably going to make that our last rotation that table and close out these other ones too. So uh, when the blinds come back around, we'll go ahead and click our button. Um... We'll probably go ahead and turn this off. So this is probably going to be our last hand of this episode of the 10K Challenge. So hopefully we'll get to a flop here. We'll see. No. All right, guys. Till next time. Good luck at the tables.